Hello everyone, I'm Pei Lin Li from Tsinghua University. Today I'm going to talk about our work Sunfla, a decentralized blockchain with high throughput and fast confirmation. This is a joint work of Tsinghua University and Confluence Foundation. To begin with, I'd like to talk about what an ideal blockchain is like. We think an ideal blockchain should have the following properties. The first is robustness. That is, it should have strong safety to defend against double spending attacks. It should also have good liveness to be against denial of service attacks. Secondly, the system should have high performance in the sense that it should achieve both high throughput and low confirmation latency at the same time. Thirdly, it should have good decentralization. That is, it can scale to large amount of participants and allow arbitrary nodes to join and leave the network without permission. The two most valuable blockchain systems, Bitcoin and Ethereum, both have good robustness and decentralization, but still suffer a lot from performance problems, which brings undesirable user experience, non-processing delay, and skyrocketing transaction fees. For example, the typical transaction throughput of Bitcoin is about seven transactions per second, and the Ethereum throughput is about 30 transactions per second, while other centralized services like PayPal or Visa can provide hundreds or thousands of transactions per second which indicates the level of throughput needed in the real world. In order to better understand why confidence can be superior to alternative existing blockchain systems, let's first look at some background about how Bitcoin and Ethereum work. Typically, a public and decentralized blockchain system like Bitcoin is built upon a peer-to-peer -peer gossip network where each node is connected to several other nodes. Transactions are packed into blocks a block containing user transactions will be broadcasted in the network and replicated to all the nodes. The blocks form a chain as the ledger for the transaction history, and all the nodes in the network will eventually replicate the same ledger. In the chain of blocks, the later one can be treated as a vote to the early one. Every node in the network can generate new blocks to vote for the previous one. If the voting is cheap, an attacker can easily create tens of nodes to arbitrarily manipulate the blockchain ledger. This is called stable attack. In order to avoid this vulnerability, Bitcoin and Ethereum introduce a mechanism called proof of work that uses computation power and voting weight. Specifically, to generate a block, a node needs to solve a puzzle which consumes considerable computation resources. This process is called mining. Bitcoin and its variants adopt the Nakamoto consensus where the longest chain rule is applied. In the longest chain rule, all the honest participants agree on the longest chain and the valid transaction history. In practice, the length of the chain also considers the consumed computation power and the weight of the block, which is called the mining difficulty. Normally, the security guarantee of Nakamoto consensus is that as long as more than 50% computation power is owned by honest nodes, the longest chain also formed by them. A superficial reason on why this system can only achieve very low throughput is that they typically employ small block generation weight and small block size. For example, Bitcoin adopts one megabyte block size per 10 minutes, while Ethereum adopts about 100 kilobyte blocks per 50 seconds. These parameters significantly limit their throughput. So what if we run a model consensus with larger blocks or faster block generation rate? Simply doing this does not work because if so, we will get a nature look like this. The issue here is that there are a lot of folks in the nature. This is because it takes the time to broadcast a newly mined block across the entire network. During this delay, other miners may not be able to see this new work, new block, and still my, I, their own new blocks following the same older blocks, and therefore introduce the faults. Larger block sizes means longer broadcast delay, which means more concurrent blocks and thus more faults. The faster block generation rate and a similar effect. There are two drawbacks if the nature has too many faults. First, in the longest chain rule, only blocks in the longest chain are considered valid. Other blocks on the faults will be discarded and waste network and processing resources. Secondly, it can criticize the security, which is a more severe issue. To see why it is not safe anymore, let's say an example. If we have the same number of blocks, 
the more forks does the nature have, the shorter is the longest chain. Suppose the longest chain only contains 10% blocks in the nature. This means the attacker can only have can use only 10% computation power to revert the longest chain which significantly reduces the security guarantee. Later on, another consensus algorithm called GHOST had been proposed to address this security issue caused by forks. It is also going to let all the nodes agree on a single chain in the ledger, but instead of using longest chain rule, it apply, applies the heaviest subtree rule, specifically to select the blocks into the agreed chain. It starts from picking the genesis block into the agreed chain. The genesis block is the first block in the ledger. Then it iteratively advances to the child block with a heavy subtree and uh, include it into the agreed chain. Here is an example. We first select the genesis block into the agreed chain. The genesis block has two child blocks, A and B. The subtree of A has six blocks, while the subtree of B only has five blocks. So we select A into the agreed chain. Then following the same rule, we will have C, E, and H also included in the chain. When generating a new block, it follows the last block in the chain. Unlike the longest chain rule, Ghost makes all the blocks, including the blocks in the force, contribute to the chain selection, and hence does not have the security issue that I mentioned before. However, Ghost still suffers from lifeless attack. Here is an example. Assume the honest nodes form two groups and there's a message DNA D between nodes in different groups, while the communi communication DNA of nodes in the same group or between the attacker and any other honest node can be ignored. Because of such message DNA, there can be a period where the, the nature consists of two folks of group A and group B. The attacker can secretly mine blocks on both the folks A and folks B and does not immediately expose these blocks to us nodes. Later on, when group A mines some new blocks following the folks A and send them to group B, the attacker may obser observe this before group B because of the network DNA between the two groups. It then exposes the blocks mined on folks B to group B. This will make group B think that the folks B is heavier than folks A. So they will continue to mine blocks in fork B. And then the tanker can expose the blocks mined in fork A to the nodes in group A. This will also make nodes in group A think that fork A is still heavier. If the block generation is much faster than D, then if there will be a lot of intransit blocks in, during the delay, an tanker with little computation power can store the consensus forever. And this is what we call balance attack. The attacker can balance the two subtree weights to maintain folks and prevent leverage. One fix to this issue is to use what we call structured ghost approach. That is, we only choose a small fraction of blocks to have weight for the chain selection. And all the remaining blocks only contribute to transaction. This will be secure against liveness attacks if the fraction of weighted blocks is small enough, because this makes the concurrent generation of weighted blocks very rare. For example, it still considers the case where they have two groups, A and B, and the system is under a balance attack. The dash line blocks do not have weight for transaction. At some point, a weighted block is generated by A, which is shown in the double line block. Still, in group B, cannot see it immediately, so it continues to generate blocks in fork B. However, after a time delay D, group B observed the weighted block A. Although at this time, folk A and B have the same number of blocks, but folk A has heavier weight because of the weighted block, then group B will start to generate new blocks following the folk A to break the balance. The problem of the fix is that the confirmation latency is low. It cannot benefit from the fast block generation weight anymore because weighted blocks are generated slowly. So is there any way we can keep fast confirmation and liveness under tanks at the same time. The answer is yes. We can combine original ghost and structured ghost to achieve this. And this is one of the key idea of Conflux. So Conflux uses a mechanism called greedy heavy adaptive subtree, GAST in short, 
to address this issue. In GUST, confluence is then different with different blocks. It still uses heavy subtree rules to snip an agree chain, since we call pivot chain. And it needs all the blocks, all the nodes to consistently decide a total order of all the blocks based on the pivot chain. In normal scenario where no attack can happen, it then equates to blocks, just snap goes, and achieve near optimal throughput and confirmation latency. When attack happens, it will then have a to a small subset of blocks. In this case, the operates next structure goes by slowing down confirmation. It ensures that the consensus can always make progress. So how to make honest predicates automatically switch between the two scenarios? Before talking about this mechanism, let's first look at how Confluent organizes the ledger structure. In Confluent, it organizes the blocks in what we call tree graph structure. Each block has one parent edge and show as solid error. Each block may also have multiple reference edges and show as density error. The reference edges simply represent the happy before relationships among blocks. For example, there's a reference edge from E to D. That means block D is generated before block E. When a new block is generated, it snaps to the last block in the pivot chain and its parent, and creates reference edges to all the other blocks that do not have incoming edges. Edges in the tree graph structure capture the history block, the history blockchain state for each generated block. We define the past subgraph of a block as all the blocks that the block generator can see when generating the block. For example, the past graph of a new block is all the current blocks, while this is the past subgraph of block H. In order to automatically decide a block weight, we propose to derive the weight from the block past the subgraph. That is essentially to design a function which takes the past subgraph of the block as input and output its corresponding weight. The function is to detect whether the current situation is on the balance attack. In other words, whether the past subgraph is stable enough. If it is stable, which means no attack is detected, it is assigned with one to the block. Otherwise, it is assigned with h to the block with probability one over h, uh, the assigned with zero to other blocks. Since all the honest participants will have a consistent view on the past subgraph, they will have a grid on the weights of the blocks, even with the presence of a tanker. The high level intuition of how we design this weight assignment function is based on this rationale. That is, for any pivot chain block A that is generated for a while not enough, one of its child blocks A prime must become dominant. It means the total weight of the subtree of A prime to take major fraction in the total weight of all the blocks generated after block A. In other words, most of the future blocks after A should accumulate to the subtree of A prime. Otherwise, a balance tank may happen. So for a new generated block, Confluent detects whether this pattern has been violated in its past subgraph. If so, it switches from the normal mode to the conservative structured ghost mode. And later on, the important weighted blocks will accumulate under the subtree of A prime again. And this will would make A prime subtree become dominant again after a while. This mode switch could start the tank once the tank disappears, it will switch back to the normal mode. Here we face a new problem about how to tell if a block is generated not enough. Simply using the timestamp in the block header is not working because the attacker can fill in any timestamp he wants and make his newly generated block look old. So how can we get a trusted block generation time in a malicious world? The answer is another blockchain. We introduce timer chain to solve this problem. The timer chain is a blockchain embedded in tree graph with non gauge chain rule and no, no block generation rate. Embed here means some tree graph blocks called timer blocks are selected to form this timer chain. The no generation rate is achieved with the same method next structure goes, where we only select very few blocks to be timer blocks. After having a stable blockchain, we can estimate a block generation time reliably. In the example here, the timer chain starts from the genesis block D and ends with block E. 
block C is not is not in the past of block A, but its parent block C is in the past of block A. Meaning block C is the latest time of block in the past of block A. So we measure the generation time of block A and the time chain height of block C. The time chain cannot be manipulated by the adversary. So the generation time can trust it. Okay, so we have talked about how confidence handles nameless attempts to adapt ways. The rest question is how we can let all the participants note to agree on the total order of all the blocks and transactions in the nature and let them contribute to the system throughput altogether. altogether. The key idea is that since all the nodes agree on the pivot chain, we should have a consistent ordering method based on the pivot chain. Here is an example. First, each pivot block forms one epoch, and an option block down to the first epoch whose corresponding pivot chain block happens after it. Take block D, for example. D is in the past subgraph of E, so it happened before E. But D is not in the past of its parent block C, so E is the first so E is the first pivot block after D, meaning D belongs to the epoch of E. After assigning each block to an epoch, the ordering algorithm is quite straightforward. First, we order blocks based on their epoch. Then we topologically sort blocks in each epoch and break ties based on their block ID. We can see that the blocks are ordered epoch by epoch and the pivot block on one epoch is always ordered and last because by definition, all other blocks in the same epoch will be topologically before it. We have implemented a confidence system in Rust and it is open source. We have launched our testnet which can be publicly accessed. On top of the consensus protocol, we also built Ethereum virtual machine, aka EVM, to support the smart contract. Our smart contract is mostly compatible with Ethereum smart contract language solidity. In practice, there are several key optimizations and I would like to briefly introduce a little bit. The first is that in order to apply the heaviest subtree rule, we have to maintain the total subtree weight for each block, which will be continuously updated when the nature grows. In a naive implementation, for each new block entering the tree graph, it has to update the subtree weight of all its ancestors along the chain path to the genesis block. This introduces a high computation complexity of ON and cannot be tolerated in practice. We therefore apply a fancy data structure called link car tree to maintain this weight, which reduces this complexity to a no gain and becomes acceptable. A second issue is that the a second issue is that the pivot chain close to the tail of the nature will not be that stable and oscillate for a while. The total order of the block close to the tail of the nature will convert to be stable gradually in a short period. If we immediately execute the transaction in the block once the block enters the nature, because the total order may change, this will introduce redundant execution. In order to avoid this waste, we choose a deferred execution mechanism where we will wait for the order of the block coming relatively stable, then execute it. This will not cause actual confirmation latency of transactions because to confirm a transaction, we already have to wait for a block to have a stable order. After talking about why confidence can achieve high throughput and fast confirmation at the same time, here we run some large scale evaluations based on implementation. We run up to 12,000 of confidence for nodes on among the EC2 virtual machines and limit the bandwidth of each for node to 20 megabit per second. And the network latency is simulated between four nodes. We may achieve throughput and the confirmation latency. We are considered block confirmed if its confidence is the same as the waiting for six blocks in Bitcoin. This is a result where block size is 300 kilobytes and the block generation rate is four blocks per second. It's first look at the throughput. For confidence, it was 9.6 megabit per second. 
This is a typical measurement of the system throughput in such kind of high throughput branching system. Since consensus protocol is not a bottleneck at all, and the system is bottleneck and natural bandwidth. So this measurement is about the bandwidth usage for effective block transmission without incurring significantly increasing of the message delay. And 9.6 megabit per second is roughly half of the maximum available network bandwidth, which is near optimal for the P2P network transmission. This translates to about 4,000 transactions per second with typical transactions as in Bitcoin. Comparatively, this is up to 32 times the throughput of golf under the same setting. And it's worth noting that the throughput of contact keeps stable regardless of the number of nodes because all blocks are eventually committed. But the throughput of goals decreases with the number of nodes because increasing the number of nodes will increase the network delay and cause more faults, making less, making less blocks included in the pivot chain. In addition, the transaction confirmation latency is about 50 seconds on average in complex, which is a small constant factor of the block broadcast delay, which is about 15 seconds in our memory. And the confirmation latency are stable when we increase the number of nodes, which shows that complex can scale very well to more than 10,000 full nodes. To conclude, complex achieve both high throughput and fast confirmation at the same time. Confluence also is safe against both double spending and the nameless attack. This is achieved with a novel consensus protocol GAPST, which assigns different ways to blocks adaptively and automatically. With 12,000 of those, Confluence can reach 9.6 megabit per second throughput and confirm blocks within one minute. Thanks. If you are interested in Confluence project, you can check our website here. Thanks for listening.